Hi, Boston. We're the Bingo Players. And you tune in to EDMBoston.com. Welcome to Boston, Bingo Players. Introduce yourselves. Thank you. I'm Paul. I'm Mark. And good to be here in Boston. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you guys. First time. First time here? Yeah, first time. So what do you guys know about the city? I mean, you've been to Logan, I assume? Did you fly you in know, there? No, um, Aerosmith is from here, the rock band. Nice. We know uh, they have Harvard here, right? Yeah. A lot of big colleges. Yeah. We know it's beautiful because we uh, drove from the airport to uh, our hotel. So beautiful surroundings and stuff. And that's, for me, that's it. Great. Um, so you guys were just in Miami at Ultra. How are you guys still alive is my question. Oh, well, we had a one day off after Ultra. So we uh, slept the whole day. Now we're finally ready. That was yesterday. So. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah. So now we finally have a finally finally had some sleep, and now we're ready to go. All right. Do you guys like have a secret sauce? Like I know Dada Life does the champagne and bananas. Is there anything for the bingo players? Uh, no, we don't. It's just high energy with us. You know, we just like to entertain the crowd with like interact, play great music, and just have fun with them. Okay, great. Uh, can you take us back to the moment uh, you found out? You were going back, you were going to play on the main stage at Ultra, and what, what that was like? Uh, well, it wasn't so romantic to be honest, because we had a pretty full schedule, so it was like our uh, bookings agents at Ultra, they were like figuring out which date was the best. So finally we got out of, uh, we, we figured the Sunday would be best, because we had the Tiesto show on Saturday, so it was all a big hassle. but. Uh, of course, when the deal was done, we were really excited to play there. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, you know, when you got onto the stage and behind the decks, what was it like to look out at a crowd that big? It's the best, it's the best feeling, man. You, you see all these people waiting for you to come on, and then you come on and people were like screaming and clapping and... You get this wall get, of sound yeah, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. just walk behind the DJ booth. You know, you know, you know in my there are like so many people from different countries from the ultra they put up their flags at that moment and they were like screaming for us and then you, you just start the first track and people were like going nuts and you get energy right away so it's amazing oh that's just so exciting yeah uh, it is so when you guys got up there did you guys already have your set pre-planned or did you just go with the uh, based well, off the crowd when you play on an important festival like that you always look at the bill because we play stuff from other people as well, so you also also look to the to the other artists who are on there, and you're not playing their songs. So uh, you look at it a bit more than normally when you play the club. We just play and we see what happens, and we know it was broadcasted. So we were thinking, oh, okay, these artists are playing. We can play their songs, and for the rest, it, it, it depends on the crowd. And you know, we play a lot of our own songs. We always do. So that's those are always in, and the rest we figure out while we play. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of people definitely played your tracks during all track. Yeah. How did you guys feel about that? That's amazing, man. That's like... The biggest that, compliment Yeah, there, right? of course. That's their support, you know, that means so much to us. And people are all saying, oh, this guy's playing the rental, this guy's playing your track, this whatever, no? And we were like, so happy with that, so yeah, that's cool. Sure. That's really exciting. I mean, you guys are Even like uh, Fatboy Slim, he's like one of our all-time heroes, and he yeah. plays Lamour on uh, his track. Yeah. We were like, wow, that's that's huge yeah. for us, you know? Yeah, I mean, definitely, after you start off at the beginning of the year, you, know, you release like three huge tracks. Definitely to feel like, you know, like, yeah. hey, the hard work paid off. We have to say, we already do, we're doing this for more than five years, but like the last year, mm -hmm. we had like Cry, Rattle, Mode, and Lamour. And those were like our biggest four songs in our entire career, I think. Yeah. Apart from maybe Devotion and some yeah. other stuff. But really big songs for us so yeah we couldn't be happier about that great are you guys almost like afraid to leave the studio because you don't know what's going to come out we, we really want to get back into the studio because we've been touring like crazy last two months especially march was touring every day doing a show every day so now we are like itching to go back in the studio in april and make some new tracks you know? okay yeah. do you guys produce on the road at all i know a lot of artists do we try, but it's like um, uh, very hard for us. We, we produce the best work when we're just back in the home at the studio with the big speakers and like our own equipment. But we try, but it's hard. Yeah. Um, speaking of equipment in the studio, uh, for the people at home, you know, 
What kind of monitors do you guys really like to use? Last year we uh, bought um, at, uh, the Focal. Focals. I don't know, A7, A4, A7, I don't know. Focal, Focal is the best speakers. And um, since we use using them, we really get a good feel about our mixes. Before that, we used like really, 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 really old general legs. Yeah. They were good, but now we have these new speakers. This is good. It's, you not, hear a that co it's not a coincidence that when we when we bought these new speakers, we did cry, rattle, all these new yeah. speakers. Yeah. Ah. So we bought them like a year ago. So. That was the best move ever. Yeah. So it's really important for all the producers out there to buy the the right monitors for you. You know. And who are like have like a, uh, uh, a real sound, like yeah. a, a truthful sound. Yeah. Great. Uh, so going back to Ultra, can you just talk about like how your guys' set differs from like a massive crowd as opposed to like tonight at Pichu, we have a really intimate space. You know, it doesn't matter like if you play for 50,000 people or for like 800 people, it doesn't matter to us. It's like, for me, the most important thing is the energy. The energy has to be good. And if I play for 800 people that go mental, I'd rather have that than play for 10,000 people who don't do anything, you know? So, I think it's good that you have to change. It keeps it fresh, it keeps it exciting, and, and I really exactly. love both things, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. Can, uh, Sunry James and Ryan Marciano were in Boston the week before uh, Miami Music Week, and they kind of talked about what Miami was all about for them. And they said it was a mix of having fun, but really going out there and really proving themselves as DJs and producers. How did you guys approach it? Uh, well, it's not really about, you, uh, you always want to prove yourself. It doesn't matter which night it is, you always want to make, make the best out of the night, out of your festival gig, whatever. Only um, Miami are so many people at the show, so we're like, okay, let's, we were like really, really tired. Like you said, we, we came in from 6 a.m. flights, so you really have to push yourself and really try to give everything you got, so. Yeah, for me, it's, it's 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 not so much proving myself, but having fun. Yeah, I see Miami as a fun week, and of course, when you play at Ultra, you want to do your best, you know. And, and when you do the shows, you want to do your exactly. best. But for the rest, it's it's fun. It's, it's just fun, yeah. you know. And that's that's how we approach everything we do. You know, we we do it because we really love to do it. You know, we don't yeah. see it as this serious. No. thing. You know, when we're like businessmen no, or whatever. No, no. We just want to make the best out of the show. Yeah. This part of what? No, I think you, uh, you definitely feel that energy, especially from the new tracks like Mode. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. And why don't you guys, you know, since we're talking about new tracks, you guys released one today on Hysteria Records. Why don't yeah. you talk uh, actually, a little bit about that? Yeah, actually it's not our track, to be specific. It's a track of a producer we really, really believe in. It's, it's called Tricks. He's a, he's a producer from Holland. He made a song called Mad Dash. We released it on Hysteria, but we just edited it. That means that we just tweaked it a bit, changed it a little bit. But it's his song, and we love the song. And um, I think it already entered like the top 60 in Beatport in like one day. So yeah. Amazing. I'm really happy that people really love the track because we really, really want to push other artists as well with our own label. You know, we do that. We have a lot of good stuff coming out on a label that's not our own. Right. So, but we like to push new producers as well. You know, that we really love. Right. So when you approach an edit like that, what do you kind of look at and say, I want to tweak this or that? Can you get into that a little bit with this new track? Yeah, maybe because uh, new producers who produce songs and stuff and they don't DJ a lot, they don't know what works on the dance floor. We've been DJing for a pretty long time now and we know what works. Sometimes you have a really good song, but if you tweak it just a little bit more, it works much better on the dance floor. So that's what we did. Okay. Uh, you know, talking about your DJing, uh, you guys, like you said, you've been at it for at least five years. What do you do to kind of keep challenging yourself on the turntables and keep your skills up and learning new things? Um, well, first, the most important thing is to keep it fresh, you know? We, um, we never want to repeat ourselves for a long time. Of course, you have a few songs every set you play. But we try to we switch have to it play up. Red Album. Yeah, yeah. If For we instance. don't play them, they will kill us. <laughs> so so we, we switch it up. We, we make uh, new mashups in the studio. We make uh, uh, edits out of tracks you wouldn't think about at, at the first.
first time. So we always try to challenge ourselves with yeah. trying stuff people don't know about, you know? Definitely. So uh, what have you guys heard about the Boston audience? Well, we heard there are some crazy college kids around here. So we, we heard some rumors. So. We're excited about tonight, yeah, yeah. We the energy is really good. Good, good, yeah, no, it's been definitely really great here at BG. I, on uh, Sunday night, Tiesto was here, so that was we a lot heard. of fun. Yeah, we, he had a great time, time. so, yeah, great. we're going to play with him Friday again, next week, so we're going to talk about the BG experience. <laughs> so what do you think about this? I, Avicii just announced his uh, arena tour, and Boston's going to be one of his stops, and it's going to be like approximately 20,000 people. It's huge. Uh, I hope it sells out. He sells out every show because that means that EDM is really taking off in the US. So I'm really curious how uh, how the attendance will be at his concerts because it will be a great thing for all of us if he does really well with those arena tours because that means that there's a real big market now. You know, yeah. and we can do a lot of bigger things than only clubs. And that's great. Do you think uh, you know Boston being on that tour it catches? Uh, your eyes and other artists' eyes in the industry. What do you What do you think the effect is on, on Boston? You mean? Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, you know everybody's saying that it's blowing up here, in the US, and it is. But I I think it, it will be much bigger in the coming years. So I think right. this is just the beginning. And like Avicii doing the arena tour now and doing Boston, for instance. I think it's it, more and more people in Boston, for instance, will be educated and. and getting into dance music because all the college kids are already into dance music. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of more, you know, maybe a little bit older people who are not that familiar with all the dance music. And I think it's a great way to introduce dance music to a big crowd. Yeah, in past interviews you've talked about it like in Holland, you know, they've kind of been 10 years ahead of us. Yeah. As far as they got like the education that yeah. that age group grew up and then there was people right below them that fell right into it. Uh, so, I mean, I totally can see that, you know, as, as the age group grows larger, the music will get bigger. You know what it is? In, in the U.S., dance music has always been really underground. In Holland, where we come from, you have a lot of DJs who come from Holland. We believe that uh, the reason why is that there are, like, um, we have a very educated crowd. Like, you hear dance music on the mainstream radio. You don't hear that here. You know, right. you, when you're in the U.S., you hear hip-hop, country, R&B. You hear David Guetta and Black Eyed Peas, of course, but, and LMFAO. But like the real instrumental dance music, you don't hear it here. In Holland, it makes top 10, you know? And for the last pa twist, uh, past 20 years in Holland, you know, from since 91, you had mainstream dance music on the radio, like tracks you now hear in Bootlegs or like our Cosint Classic in the underground scene, where on mainstream radio in Holland since 91. So it's. So it's so different. Yeah. So we 20 years ago we already started this. Now it's starting over here. So it's like a big gap to fill, you know. So, but we believe that the, the U.S. people are really when they are into something they go for it, you know. So I think they will catch on to us very fast. What you now saying that you've kind of seen like that 10 years in Holland. What what do you kind of see ahead for America? I mean, well, I, I think that they, they will finally the radio will embrace dance music. I think that will be the next step because mm -hmm. the club scene is, is, is amazing now. Uh, like you said, arena shows are taking place now. When we do the Tiesto show, there are also big arenas with like 10,000 people only there for Tiesto. We are guests, but then you know they're there for them, for him. And I think that if radio embraces dance music, like the real dance music, like uh, also the instrumental stuff, songs and all that kind of stuff, then it becomes mainstream and it gets huge. Can you guys talk a little bit about Holland and Dirty Dutch and what that means to you guys? Dirty Dutch, well... We're not Dirty Dutch. No, no, but it's funny, it's like just a term. They, they, it's a marketing term they, they thought about when they, uh, when they brought the dance music over to the US. It's from Chucky. It's from Chucky, Chucky, Chucky thought about that. And it's mainly it's his the, brand. Yeah, it's mainly the, the sounds like Afrojack, Chucky. Uh, and, then, and I think it's it's a, it's a cool term, but um, people are like mistaking the, the, the label. They like labeling it Dirty Dutch only because it comes out of Holland, but that's not true. It's like so much more from Holland besides Dirty Dutch. But I think it's cool because it like introduced it into the US with a term, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Um, yo, let's go back to the uh, ultra set. You guys said you, you played two or three new tracks. Can you talk a little bit more about them? Yeah, one came mid set and one came at the end. Uh, we played three new tracks. Yeah. One we did in a sort of mashup kind of thing, and two new tracks. And we were like. We were like, we, we knew that the set was being recorded. We were like, we want to give away something new and fresh to the fans, you know, because they all love to download the track. Yeah, set. And we want to see ID, ID, ID in the track list, you know, where people are like. I got it right here. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah ID, it. ID, ID, ID over here. Yeah, so we have That's this good. ID, we have ID. this ID, we have this ID, yeah. and we have this ID, uh, because it's, there's another ID with it. And those are all our own tracks. And we were like, let's give away some of our own tracks. And you know, see what the people think about it. It's also a good way to test out if your audience like the songs, you know? So it works both ways. Yeah, can you talk, what was the new song? It was the Daft Punk uh, mashup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we actually have, we, we did the Martin Solveig mashup. That's like a new song we put in there a bit. The Daft Punk is a new song we put in there a bit. And then the uh, number, the, the, this, these two. Yeah. And are, then those are two original songs. Okay. So those are just new tracks. We just send them out and we're going to see what the reaction is like. I think you guys are going to get a lot of love from them. A lot of love. Thanks. I hope so. I hope so, too. Um, you know, for tonight's set, what can we look forward to? You know, like you said, we're playing a smaller room, but it packs a lot of uh, energy well, in there. Yeah. Well, you can do more things, you know. It's like when you're more into the crowd with, like, less people, you can just a little more. You can go a little bit deeper. You can go, you know, when you play a big festival for an hour, you just play a power set for an hour, you know? Mm -hmm. When you play a club for two hours, a smaller club, you just do a lot of, yeah, you do some new stuff, you do some stuff they don't know. Um, you can go a little bit deeper, that's it. Cool, so uh, can you talk about some of uh, your favorite tracks right now? And what you I guys love the new playing? Porter Robinson one, Language. Yeah, it's a good yeah. track. It's, it's my favorite yeah. right now. Yeah. I, I still love it, it's a titanium remix from Alessio. It's very, it's a very pop, Pop kind of song, but it's really good. It's really good production. Really good. All right, great guys. Uh, you know, I really appreciate sitting down with you, and we're You're really looking forward to the set. Thanks for your time. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. All right, EDM Boston. We'll see you out there.